Hello and welcome to Heiser Media's coverage of the Norse Gods Championship. We are in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for a four round tournament. This tournament is brought to you by Central PA Disc Golf. Thank you to them for sponsoring and thank you to our patrons for helping support this coverage. I'm Dave Oster here with a special guest in the booth, Kevin Gleason. Kevin, how's it going today? I'm uh, doing pretty good today. Yeah, my name is Kevin Gleason. I am the uh, team captain for Latitude 64. Extremely grateful for the opportunity to do commentary with you and, uh, you know, thank you for the invite. Absolutely. And we will get right into it. Hole one, par three is 332 feet. We're playing to the alternate pins today for the first round. So the best we're looking at is the main pin. The alternate is a little bit over to the right. 2021 and to 2022 White choice. Rose Open champion. He's an absolute bomber. Put your hands together. Lucas Oberholzer Hess. Yeah. And this was my first time playing with Lucas. Um, this kid is, is something different. He is extremely good. Uh, I think he's only about 15 or 16 years old. He's flicking his felon here and uh, just shows you right there how good this kid's going to be. Second off the tee coming up from Salisbury, Maryland. Team captain, Latitude 64, TikTok famous. 81 wins. Give it up, Kevin Gleason. And we got a special treat having you in the booth and watching you play, so it will be extra exciting for our viewers today. Yeah, so uh, I'm starting off, I'm throwing uh, one of the new Royal Line Rives, the Linus Carlson edition. And uh, all I'm trying to do here is just throw a hyzer around the short basket, get a skip, and uh, try to go down the hill. I just pushed it a little bit too straight. Third off the tee, coming up from Willing Wilmington, Delaware. They call him the Delaware Deucer. He's a legend on the Northeast. 265 career wins, sponsored by Inova. Give it up. Mike Moser. <laughs> and, uh, to those that don't know Mike, Mike is the guy that I would watch 15 years ago. And uh, when I moved up to Maryland, playing with him was just such a treat. And, you know, it was unbelievable being able to play. And after a while, beat somebody that, uh, you know, I looked up to. So Last off the tee. Sponsored by Team Norse Gods. I could not do any of this stuff without him. This entire tournament, all the tournaments I run, anytime I need anything, he's right there to do it for me. Nicest guy in the world. He's also an amazing disc golfer. He's picked up some MPO wins this year, including Akron Res Red, Red Rose Roundup. Give it up, Nathan Johnson. Yeah, Woo! Thank you. And having the assistant TD on the card is always a uh... Nice throwing around, get to see them both play and run the tournament. And if any uh, rules, things come up, he's uh, right there, so. Yeah, I was able to ask him quite a few times on some of the rules questions, so it was nice. Nathan's a good kid. So we got the the two younger kids and the two older guys playing today. So let's uh, see how it ends up. And, and so far, both the kids have thrown a sidearm right down there. Uh, I'm just laying up on this hole. There's no reason for me to go for it this early in the round, first hole. Uh, oh, just off the rim for Mike. He was uh, maybe just a step or two closer than you, and he was going for it. Yeah, Mike had the flatter landing, me putting downhill from where I was. I could very easily have just pop it up a little too high and, and you know, blowing past the basket. And right here, I think Nathan just had that first round on camera jitters, and I'm sure he'll pick it up as the, the round goes on. It's happened to probably all, all of us, everybody who's watched, we've all missed that uh, eight to 10 footer just because of a little bit of nerves. I've missed many of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, the it's nice when you're able to fight through the nerves. Uh, and it's nice when you make a mistake like that but you push through it and, uh, you know, leave it at that hole and uh, finish the round the way it, uh, you wanted to. And like you mentioned, this is a four round tournament. So there's still a lot of golf to come. We're at DF Buchmiller Park, if we didn't mention it yet. And we'll be at Shiprock for the last two rounds, but 
Kevin, tell us what we have for hole two. So hole two is a uh, 393 foot par three. You're trying to throw something probably a little bit to the right of the short basket and let it glide down the hill to the longer basket. A uh, couple trees on the left side, some trees to miss on the right side. And I'm pretty sure that uh, he's throwing a verdict here, if I remember correctly. Uh, 400 foot shot with an overstable mid range is something that is not in my bag. Yeah, quite, quite impressive. You'll, you'll see throughout the round the power that Lucas has. A uh, 16 year old still in high school. Amazing player. Yeah, I. Uh, I threw this one a little bit low, so I'm going to go on my Blister Pro and uh, just do it in the ground. And this is a little bit of deceiving because of the short uphill, but then the hole is actually a downhill hole. So you have to keep it somewhat low, but not so low where what unfortunately happened to you, you kind of catch the ground a little bit too early. Yeah, and I think Mike could have used it a little bit lower. He was throwing his destroyer right there, and uh, but he does have a putt at the basket. Yeah, probably somewhere in between yours and Mike's throw would have been uh, ideal. Maybe something like this. <laughs> something exactly like this. Nathan put a great throw on this one. And he's pretty close to parked. Yeah, that'll do. And again, I'm just laying up. I'm not even trying to run at it right now. Yeah, no point this early first round. Don't want to be getting uh, any silly extra strokes on uh, a course this easy. And Luke is almost ringing it up. Mike probably 45 out, I would say. Putting with ABR. And again, just right off the rim. And here we go. Here goes Nathan after the, you know, the short miss putt on hole one. Uh, let's see how he can do here on hole two. And his Luna found the bottom of the cage. So that was a great, great uh, comeback right after the first hole. Yeah, certainly want to make one of those to get your round started. Uh, maybe even a little bit of a longer putt. It will uh, give you the confidence moving forward to the round. If you have a bunch of tap-ins in the round, we've definitely seen how that can affect players once they do have a long putt. So getting it out of the way early can definitely be uh, helpful. Yes. And uh, with this course, this layout, you know, these holes are a little bit longer than the next round that we play. And, um, you know, you need that 350, 400 foot shot. And here at hole three is, I think it's a little farther than 271 feet. We're actually playing to hole seven's basket, which is behind hole three's basket. So, and Nathan here just with a nice little flick around the corner and parked the shorter basket. Yeah, so with this alternate layout, there's a couple of temporary baskets. This is one of the holes we're actually playing to the main basket of seven, like you said. Uh, some of the drone shots were taken before the alternate layout was set up. So we'll, uh, we'll give you the, the gist of the hole with the drone previews, but then kind of explain where the players are actually thrown to some of these holes. And on this hole, I was just throwing my Havoc around the corner just to lay it up to play it for a three. Looks like Mike throwing the Sky Roller. Yeah, I know Eric was following us. The tournament director, I tapped him on the shoulder, and I was like, look, Mike's about to throw, ro uh, throw his Roadrunner for a roller. <laughs> but man, thank you for letting me see that. And... Uh, Mike, after that, said, you know, if I'd had a little bit more practice with that shot, you know, he he could have got it there. Yeah, it was close. Just needed to turn over just a bit more. But uh, so it looks like the four of you are probably just laying up. Maybe Mike or – or uh, Mike gave it a little stronger bid than, yeah. than the other Mike and Lucas did. are pretty close. And a great putt by Lucas. Yeah, super confident from far. He ran just a little bit longer of a putt from the last one, almost made it. 
Yeah, makes a correction, and he catches in second birdie in three holes. Starting off really well. And the rest of us just going up and tap it in. So a couple of pars of birdie on hole three, moving over to hole four, par three, 405 feet. Trying to miss these trees at the beginning, get under or through the limbs, going to the alternate pin past the main pin around the corner. It's a little bit of a blind uh, basket from the tee and plays downhill, so a little bit shorter than 400 feet. And we'll see how these guys can make out. I believe that was Lucas's tournament harp that he was throwing off the pad. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. 400 feet, we'll just throw a harp. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's my exact thought when I come up and I have, what, a 13 speed in my hand going with my ride again. And um, I put this ex almost exactly where I wanted to. I needed a little bit left. I barely caught the limb and kept me short. Uh, I think if I'd missed that limb, I'd have been right inside the circle for a putt. Yeah, and a strange skip. Didn't expect a super high skip off the grass there. Talking about strange skips, watch this one right here. <laughs> yeah, almost identical, even if uh, a little bit higher than yours. Yeah, so there's some roots down there, and I think Mike and I must have both just hit a root, and it popped us straight up and put us out to the left. Nathan let this one get a little bit away from him, and I think it put him probably right around circle's edge for a comebacker, maybe 20... 830 feet. Uh, it looked like Lucas was laying that up. He didn't look like he went for it very strong, but uh, it slid past the basket just a little bit. And you can see Mike and I are almost on top of each other over here, just giving it kind of a little half bid, semi little go for it. Um, I'm going to throw a little, I'm throwing a proto keystone here and was looking to just get a little bit more anheuser on it Ooh. yeah you gave it a decent bid definitely had the height and here's that comebacker for nathan and probably around circle's edge probably a step or two inside circle's edge no right outside sorry and that's a great step putter so he was right outside the circle yeah and you can see we're playing on the single chain baskets and you have to throw them maybe a little bit more specific and maybe I'll ask you about it do you try to get into the basket any differently with these single chains uh, single chain baskets so I try not to think about being single chain because I putt with so much hyzer that I like to cut through baskets with numerous chains so <laughs> um, I do on my shorter putts like this I try to tap it in a little flatter but even you can see there I'm still a little bit of an angle so um, these older baskets, they uh, I have been known to cut through on me a few times. So here we are at hole five, 343 feet. The temporary basket is up to the right about now. And if you see that little picnic table over there, it's probably gonna be right to the right of that. So people will be throwing um, under stable fairways or rollers um, and or sidearm. And it looks like uh, Lucas probably is throwing his felon again which uh, throws it very well. He has much power as he has with the backhand. He matched with the forehand. So he has a lot of the tools, especially for you know, his age and le uh, length of experience with disc golf. Let's see. So Nathan here also went with the firebird. With the firebird. I've gone back to my pink havoc, which is just an understable disc. Uh, I think I could have popped it with a little bit more hyzer and would have got that good little glide and it would have turned right and ran to the basket. Um, Mike is going with a flippy Roadrunner roller. Uh, and if you watched a lot of videos to Mike, he can throw a roller better than about anybody. And uh, I think a little bit flatter on the release and he would have been under the basket.
Mike just laying it up from back there. We're both, I think we're kind of playing follow the leader right now. Yeah. These holes. <laughs> yeah, it seems there's a, a stark contrast between the style and gameplay between you and Mike and Luke and Nathan. Yeah, I think the problem is, is Mike and I don't throw 450 plus feet. <laughs> uh, Mike definitely did back in the day. Um, I've never been one to throw it that far. So I try to play, I play the holes to my ability. Uh, if it's a 450 foot hole and I know that I'm not getting there, I'm trying to get it 350 feet. And Lucas kept it a little bit low on that one, probably right outside the circle, going in to tap it in. It looks like we're all going to finish hole five with a par. Hole five is one of those holes I wish I had thrown a couple times just to get the, the line a little better. Especially with these temporary baskets that aren't out there all the time, obviously. You uh, you know, only kind of tournament day have the ability to check them out. Yeah, this was my first time at this course. I came by the day before and practiced it. It is an amazing course. I would love to have a course like this growing up. I did have one kind of like this. It's good for any player. But here we are at hole six, 305 feet. What you're trying to do is penetrate through the woods to the basket hiding in the back. If you fall off a little bit left, you'll, it's really, really thick left. And then if you have the power, I think the shot is to run it over the short basket and try to push it through. Or do like this young kid does and try to push it right through the middle. Um, the shot's right between those two big trees. But I think if you can get a good S on it and you can fall in on the outside of the woods. And Nathan is going to be in a bit of trouble where he landed. Um, I'm going gold. I'm blister pro. Like I was saying, I'm trying to throw it over the basket and cut in. It hit a limb and came down a little bit early. But I'll have a fairly easy up and down from there. Looks like Mike is probably over by Nathan, but this is definitely one of the tightest greens I've ever seen. You'll see in a second. We obviously couldn't even see the basket from the tee pad, but it's kind of, it's a straight shot, but it's just so tight. You can't really see in there. And I believe that was Nathan pitching up and over to it get was. up he threw, near the basket, yeah. Yeah, he threw a roller out of from the, he was 20 feet to the left of Mike and pitched out from there with a roller. And it was, that was an amazing shot. I think this is me over there throwing an overhand kind of hammer thing. And uh, it almost went in. <laughs> that was an amazing <laughs> attempt. Just a few, barely, too few chains. I could see a little bit of yellow from where I was. and was throwing an overhead hammer, and I was like, well, I'll just throw it as hard as I can. And I – the amount of chains I hit, I was, I was hoping it stuck, but it fell yeah. out a little bit. Very close. Can't really get much closer now without it staying in there. No. Again, we're all just putting out for par. Uh, this is a tricky little course. I mean, it looks like shorter holes, but it's real technical shots. You really have to push on some of the holes to get where you where you need to be. So. And as mentioned, these greens, this isn't the only green that's going to be similar how to how tight this is. You know, when you're walking in here, you can barely walk without touching both sides of the, I guess you could say the rough with your hands if you stretch out your arms. But uh, it definitely makes it for a, a challenging, you know, second shot, trying to, you know, get a birdie or uh, even just getting close to the green. Yeah, wooded wise, I mean, like you said, this is really the, the one that's, that's really just kind of punched in there. Yeah. But we will move over to hole seven, par three, 265 feet. We're playing to the alternate pin over to the right. So you're pretty much throwing either a forehand or a backhand turnover through the main gap. We also want to thank uh, Hempfield for sponsoring this hole, as well as all of our hole sponsors for today. Thank you to every one of them. And here is Nathan, I think, throwing his Firebird again. It looks like it just was a little low and got caught up a little bit on the left side. 
Yeah, I think he was looking for a similar skip that Lucas had. He got up and then kind of filtered back down the hill. Uh, Nathan looked like he maybe got caught a little up on something. And I'm throwing my pink havoc again, and I feel that I got about as good of a turn and throw on that as I could. Uh, Mike with a nice shot. I think he got caught up on a limb again. Yeah, it looked like the last one to, to miss. He just kind of got caught up on. And he was throwing what some might not even know, a T-Rex on that hole, which is a disc I haven't thrown in many, many, many years. <laughs> yeah, I got to say, that's not a disc that I've heard of too often. Decent bid by Nathan. And here I am. I've got my warden in my hand, and I and you nailed it. Basket <laughs> and get me a two. So I'm finally on the board. I'm one down. That was a great putt. That was probably 40, 40 plus feet, right? Correct. Yeah, that's what I had. About 45, 40, 45 feet. So very and nice. There, there's Lucas. Uh, three down now after seven holes yeah so he's doing really well i believe i looked at last scoring and he was uh he had the best start is anyone else here else just dropping in yeah this Moody. alternate layout is pretty difficult as we'll see you know for the rest of this round and uh move over to hole eight par three 281 feet alternate pin is to the left of the main uh basket where it's going to be more of a backhand the line of where the forehand would be for the main basket or there's a forehand closer to the road and from what we're looking at now the basket is just to the right of that tree we're looking at so at 281 feet i believe lucas is throwing his harp again that's quite a range if the hole is under 300 to over 400 he's uh, choosing that same disc I was watching this kid throw at the other course on Sunday, and I swear he was hitting close to 550, 600 feet. That's what I heard. He said that he can uh, he can throw at 550, so it'll be certainly interesting to see him at the other course if we get him on lead card. Yeah. And there's me throwing my ribe again, uh, just over stable. It's brand new. Um, you know, I'm just throwing this thing up to 300 feet, and uh, yeah. I think I got it right inside the circle. And uh, that definitely, you know, if that works for your game, then stick to it. Don't uh, try to keep up with, with these guys that are throwing 550 putters. So. Yeah, I've learned over the years, I'll, I'm, I'm going to stick to my game. I'll, they can be throwing a putter off the drive, and I'm sticking to my 13 speed. It doesn't bother me one bit. Absolutely. So here's another tent basket. we got Nathan lining up probably right outside the circle and just popped it a little bit too high. And, he kind of got a little bit too much air under it where it lifted over the basket. And Mike, again, is just a bit off on all of his putts. Luke is here just right outside the circle. Dead center. There you go. He uh, He's a little bit up and down with his circle two putts today. He's made at least two great ones already, but then he's also gone a little bit low. So if he straightens that out, he's going to be pretty good. And I was a step inside the circle. Uh, I actually feel I put a good putt on that. I just hit it dead center, just high on the band. Yeah, that looked like it was going in until the very last second. I've even seen ones like that, especially how much hyzer you put on it. Sometimes that can catch the band a little bit and still spin down. Yeah, they'll, it'll hit that edge and just knock straight down. So. Right. Unfortunately, you yep. did kick just a bit too much out. And there's some fans yelling at me driving down the road, so you know, <laughs> gave a little wave. Can't go anywhere without seeing some fans. <laughs> but we'll move over to hole nine, par four, the only one for this layout, 448 feet, past the main basket, past this second uh, alternate basket, and you'll see in the background out in the field is the basket we're actually playing to. Pretty much a straight shot, backhand turnover, kind of just a little bit left to right. It's not really a turn to the right. Or we'll see like Lucas here throwing the forehand, trying to punch all the way out into that open. Yeah, I believe he's just throwing his heart, just an easy little, you know, flick down to the right side to get him lined up. 
me, I went Pink Havoc again, and I put it exactly where I wanted to. Starts to turn, hits a limb, kicks in the stuff on the left side. I'm still in a fairly decent spot to get up and down for my three, so it, it really didn't kick me too bad. Yeah, this is certainly reachable par four, as you were saying. If you hit that just, you know, an inch or a couple inches lower, you were heading right towards the basket for a par okay. four. So we knew Nathan's was a good shot, and we didn't know what happened to him. It just shows right there that it hit a tree. If Nathan hadn't hit that tree, I think he would have been putting down there for the eagle, too. Yeah. And same with Mike. It, it, but where all these people hit, and even where Lucas is right now, is not that bad. Lucas is a little pinched off. But uh, for his skill level at 16, I think he'll be just fine. Caught a tree at the end, probably put him right around circle's edge, maybe a little bit outside. Yeah, just around there. Pretty good. And watch and this right here. Position. Watch this right here on my umbrella. Boop. <laughs> so I hit my um, umbrella, but it, you know, the putt can't, or the, the upshot was just fine. That's pretty good. Hit the umbrella, the little uh, rail slide off the log, and uh, you're in the green. That's right. Hit the umbrella, rail slide off the log, put it. 12, 15 feet away. And see where Nathan is right here. If he hadn't caught that last tree, I think he would have been down there in the grass. And still gives it a pretty good eagle bid. Yeah. And here's Lucas for his birdie three from what, about 40? Yeah. Or 40? That's dead center. Oh, nails it. And there oh, goes my birdie putt through the chains, and I wanted to see how much hyzer I had on that. I really don't believe that I had that much on it. Yeah, that, that easily could have stayed, but we talked about it earlier. You know, your your style, it goes through in all of them, so these types of baskets, it's uh, probably even more prone. Very much more prone. I don't even let it upset me. I just go to the next hole. Uh, it's just something that happens, and then it tried to pop out again, so I'm... <laughs> I'm pushing at it to stay down, so. Yeah, well, that's what you got to do. You got to not let it affect you and move on. Um, so we got to thank our supporting sponsors, Carbella Designs and Tono Group for supporting the coverage of all four rounds here this weekend, especially the front nine of the first round. Thank you, Kevin, for joining me uh, for this commentary. And we are going to head over to the back nine to finish out the first round of this tournament. So we'll see you all on the next hole. See you in a bit.